Hello. Welcome back. I am so excited today to finally get to dive into season two of Sex in the City. This is going to be a lot to talk about because it is a lot going on. If only you guys could like see all of my notes and how they're separated by character, by all these different factors. I recommend that you go get yourself a nice glass of wine or, you know, if you're not over the age of 21, get yourself some cran apple juice. That's actually my personal favorite. I hope everybody is nice and comfortable. Let's go ahead and get into Sex in the City season two. He ever loves TV. Yes, I made a theme song so that I can talk about all my favorite shows. Oh yeah. And this is just your disclaimer that this is not me talking about any of the actors themselves, but more so their characters. Please do not attack me in the comments. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, even those who disagree with me. But let's keep it friendly. All right, let's get started with the show. I know that my cartoon videos are not as popular, so you may not have heard, but I got a new mic and I'm really, really enjoying it, honestly. I feel like it makes my voice sound a lot more smooth, but that might be just what I want to believe because I want to believe I did not waste any money. <laughs> Also, as I said in my part one, which you should totally go check out if you haven't already, I'm trying to make this as spoiler free as possible because I know some people are watching this with the intent of simply just trying to have someone to discuss the season with and they haven't actually seen the whole show and I'm just trying to be mindful of that. So I will have comments that contain spoilers, but I'll make sure to save them to the end and let you guys know ahead of time. And with that being said, I do not recommend going to the comments if this is your first time watching the show. Okay, now with that being said, let's move on to Sex in the City season two. Season two aired from June 6th to October 3rd, 1999. There are 18 episodes in this season. Carrie Bradshaw is played by Sarah Jessica Parker. Kim Cattrall plays Samantha. Cynthia Nixon plays Miranda and Kristen Davis plays Charlotte. Chris Noth plays Big. Willie Garson plays Stanford. Episode 1, Carrie is still trying to get over Big. Carrie's date tries to kiss her and because she's not over Big yet, she basically cries in his mouth. Ew. I don't know why that's ew, but it just is. Is it ew? Yeah, it's ew. Okay. She's crying because she saw Big in a bar and it just, I guess it just brought back like all these feelings and whatnot. Charlotte is dating a guy who won't stop grabbing his stuff. James still has a small gherkin and throughout the show, Miranda is still having trouble getting over an ex. When Miranda makes the comment about how all they do is just sit around and talk about men, I feel like that was more of a way for us to hear what some of the audience members may be thinking. But also I'm not really sure about that because it's kind of like they didn't not talk about men after that. Back to Charlotte and dating this guy who will not stop grabbing his junk. I personally cannot stand that. Oh my goodness. I cannot stand when men do that in public. I've always, like this, the men that I see do it, I will literally turn to my guy friends and I don't really have any guy friends anymore. But when I did, I would turn to them and go, why do men do that? And and it does feel like that. I agree with what they were saying. Like it would be weird if all of a sudden women just started grabbing our genitalia in public and everything. Like I don't understand it. I don't know why it's a thing. I don't know why it seems to be socially acceptable. Why does no one turn around and be like, hey man, get a room or I don't know what you would even say to that, but like, just, just, just stop it. In episode two, we are introduced to one of my other super favorite uh, side characters. Susan Sharon literally cracks me up, but Carrie is caught up in a mess because Susan Sharon asked her whether she should leave her husband or not. Big sends her flowers and she ends up accidentally inviting him to her birthday party and she realizes that she's still not over him. And I agree with Samantha, like telling your friend to leave her husband or her boyfriend or anything, that is never a good idea. James and Samantha are not sleeping together and James suggests that they go to couples therapy. At the end where she finally comes clean about how she really feels about him and their you know intimate life I low-key feel like she did not even mean to say that like it just looked like she just said it and it just plopped out and she instantly like kind of regretted it but then at the same time she was like I gotta be real I gotta be honest here Charlotte gets a dog trying to replace the love from a man she ends up giving the puppy back to Susan Sharon and Susan Sharon actually ends up getting back with her husband her abusive husband who said that really appreciate it if you take the noise somewhere else also in episode two miranda is seeing a guy who is obsessed with dirty talk she gets super comfortable and then says like not necessarily the wrong thing in bed because i mean it was what he liked but it was just like one of those things i think he probably would have rather 
just enjoyed and not really talked about. Episode three was one of those really different episodes where it almost felt like a Halloween special because it was so centered on like this Halloween-y type music, I think. In this episode, Carrie goes on a bunch of blind dates and she meets Ben. She cannot accept the fact that he is just a normal, regular guy. As crazy as it was, I actually kind of related to that a lot because after meeting so many different types of personalities and kind of knowing like who you click with and who you don't, it does get to a point where you're just like, okay, let's just cut to the chase like are you crazy or not but I actually like them together I wish they had stayed together because that that was actually a guy that I would have preferred her to be with meanwhile Samantha makes plans to get fat injections into her face Samantha is faced with a guy she almost sleeps with telling her that she looks about 40 or 41 Charlotte dates a guy who's notorious for being a uh what do you <laughs> a lion tamer <laughs> And as far as Miranda, literally nothing happens. However, in the next episode, Miranda reveals that she has been faking powerful sneezes. Charlotte is having a man do repair work in her home and trying to turn it into a relationship because just because Charlotte. A club owner is promising Samantha the future, all while not intending to follow up on any of that. He ends up standing her up and trying to like call her afterwards like, oh yeah, baby, I was caught up with blah, blah. Oh no, you weren't caught up with nothing. Carrie does a photo shoot early in the morning after being out all night. They put on the title a big question mark that centers around the whole episode about how it is really possible to be single and be happy with that. They also are trying to suggest that women her age cannot possibly be happy if they're single. I also think it's really amazing like to me personally through my lens I don't see being 30 as like this really old age like for me 30 still feels really young but this whole show is about like women in their 30s and trying to find men and blah 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 and they're acting like the women are in their 80s or 90s like 30 is just so old Stanford also appears in this episode which I was really really happy about in episode 5 Carrie has dinner with Big and I'm not gonna lie the tension the <laughs> the heat the chemistry between these two in that moment i don't know if i was the only one that felt that but like it was radiating at first they just make out and she does not end up sleeping with him samantha sleeps with a man who is married and is blacklisted which was so wild to me for so many reasons because on one hand it's like that hasn't happened already and the other hand it's like why like why does she have to be blacklisted by everyone because of what she's doing in her personal life? And the slut shamers and the Samantha haters would be screaming to the top of their lungs in my comment section because it's just immoral. Oh my God, like how could she do that? But I literally don't care. Like I literally don't care. We do not support the slut shaming around here, okay? I do not condone that in my comment section, so don't bring it. Thank you. Secretly, I also just used that as an opportunity to use my echo effect on this mic because it does have an echo effect on it, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited about it. Charlotte meets a guy at a cemetery where she's supposed to be attending a funeral. He's a widow, and she finds out that he's basically running game on a whole bunch of women who are trying to sympathize with him because he lost his wife. Miranda is moving, and her neighbor tells her this really creepy story about how the previous person who lived there actually died in the apartment and it scares her about being alone she like ends up choking on something and panicking and calling Carrie she has a panic attack and ends up going to the hospital and she does turn out to be fine but the only thing I really don't like about that and I hate to even say it because I love Miranda but I don't like how the anxiety stuff that she goes through is almost viewed like unimportant and undervalued and like I don't know I just feel like there's all these undertones behind it and anxiety is a real thing like it's not as simple as just doing one or two things and then all of a sudden you're cured like it's like the flu or something I do believe that like there are ways to cope with it in a way that makes it a little bit more comfortable but yeah that that was my only thing if you have anxiety you know that like that is not an easy fix and then I started to get comfortable I started to get a little cocky I was like you know what we are in episode five now and it's been a whole five episodes of Carrie not really doing anything truly outstanding I was like you know what there might not actually be a segment on all the crappy things that Carrie does and then big waltzed in big waltz in and all that went out the window i'm talking about the moment the camera started rolling and they started panning on his face and they started having a conversation and they started back trying to talk to each other 
that is when things once again started going down the drain. In episode six, we are brought back into that revolving door that is Big and Carrie. She starts sleeping with Big and avoiding having a real conversation with him about where they stand and sneaking around and lying about her relationship with Big until finally her diaphragm gets stuck. And if you guys don't know what that is, for all of my fellow Gen Zers, I think that a lot of the older people watching this are probably gonna be cracking up because I had literally had to look this up and I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make anybody feel their age. It's just I really do not know what it is. And I think a lot of other people don't know what it is too. Also, apparently, according to Vice.com, this form of birth control was actually losing its popularity. So there's not really a lot of understanding as to why it suddenly resurfaced in 90 sitcoms. It is said at this time, about 1% of women in the early 2000s actually use this form of birth control. It is a small rubbery disc that is inserted by a doctor that you're supposed to put in before the devil's tango. My theory with this though, and I'm not sure if this is true, obviously this is just a theory my theory is that like because the writers were older like if the show came out in the 90s i mean how old were the writers darren star is one of the popular writers on this show so i'm like maybe if that's what people's parents were using as birth control maybe that has something to do with it like they knew it based off of like that was the previous birth control used before the pill became more popular i honestly don't know There was also a point made about how like maybe this was just the best term to use so that they could actually talk about birth control because of the politics thing. I keep forgetting that around this time this show was a really big deal because it was one of the first instances where sex was a main conversation and like the things that they were doing in the show were so taboo. This was before people just were just making songs about how good their cooter is. Like I think now the things that they show in Sex in the City they're not as taboo as they used to be. I definitely think that it holds up today in society, you know, because a lot of younger people, especially around my age, are watching the show even now. But like definitely when I watch it, like I said, I forget that like at one point this was considered so heinous in a lot of people's eyes and really, really out there and experimental. But back to the point, she is basically lying to her friends about her seeing big and then Samantha has to pull her diaphragm out of her. Meanwhile, Samantha is dating a guy who really likes to shave women. Charlotte makes new friends who happen to be lesbians and this has to be one of those moments and I hate to say it but it's one of those moments where it's just one of the worst storylines ever because what did we learn from that like honestly like someone comment down below what did we actually learn from watching them go back and forth about how a straight woman can never be friends with a lesbian which is so ridiculous like I feel like it really just hurts this whole narrative about people feeling like oh because you're gay or because you're a lesbian whatever you're attracted to everybody I feel like it only encourages that whole idea which is a very 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 annoying one thank you and miranda is seeing a guy who won't stop watching corn while they do it and i'm not gonna lie i was with them until he kept telling her to move her head there move her head here and all that jazz i was like okay now we have a problem like i think like, in the same way that she did in the same way that she was fine with it at first and then after a while she was like all right let's go ahead and uh turn it off in episode seven, Carrie is staying with Big a lot more. He gives her a toothbrush head and I'm not gonna lie, as silly as it was, I had the same moment myself. But then once Big doesn't sign a card and then does not stay during her speech, she begins to feel like he doesn't value her. And I hate to defend Big, I really do. I hate to defend him, but like, she didn't even care about the poem. I think she was doing it as more of a favor to Miranda, like just to be nice, because it's Miranda's decorator that's getting married at the event where she's presenting the poem, which is a wedding, by the way. Miranda's decorator and one of her friends that she ends up actually having a crush on before are getting married. Her decorator lets Charlotte be a bridesmaid who's secretly pretending like this is her wedding. Not like totally, but like in the way that like she was talking about, she was gonna wear that dress and she was gonna stun on her. <laughs> and here's Charlotte being a hypocrite once again, because she's literally sleeping with her date that she just she thinks everything is just gonna go fantabulous and the whole time her date's father ends up groping her and then he tries to make it seem like she's a floozy so yeah and in the background they didn't really give samantha a I don't feel like this was a real storyline. I feel like this was one of those times where they were probably in the writer's room and they were like, hey, what if, what if Samantha slept with the same guy and then remember, what if, what if she was, what if, what if she slept with a lot of guys? <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> yeah. I'm on to you. 
Sex in the City Writer's Room. By the way, I am going to have to start doing a fashion or style part. Like, you know how I did in the last video where I talked about like all the times that I like Carrie's outfit or Carrie's hair, which is mostly just Carrie's hair. I want to start kind of doing that for all the characters because I'm not going to lie. They have some really good hair moments on the show or they have some really good fashion moments. And in this episode, that is one of the episodes where I saw Miranda and Samantha and they look so good. Like, I remember just watching and being like, they look they are running this season let, let me tell you about samantha and miranda they are running this season they are carrying the season on their backs they are so tired their backs aching they are running this season those are my only thoughts like every single time like i would have like general notes i'll be like they are running this season they are doing it yes yes miranda tell it like it is do what you do best yes girl go 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 in episode eight Big finally calls Carrie his girlfriend for the first time. Carrie begins to question how her relationship has changed since the last time they dated. Carrie wants Big to know her friends better. And he ends up making this like really lame excuse like, oh, like I was out all day or whatever he said. That was like literally so stupid. Like when he already had prior plans with her. And in this episode, we finally meet Steve. I literally love Steve so much. I love Miranda and Steve so much that I am going to give them their own segment. The segment is called the Miranda and Steve segment. Yeah. Isn't that like so creative? Like, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know you're thinking, you're thinking like, how did she come up with that? She's literally a, a brilliant genius. Like, oh my God, like I should like... <sighs> I will be doing that after I go over each episode, so stay tuned for that. Because trust me when I say there are people who do not like Miranda and Steve, and they will grill me for not continuing with what I was already doing. So yeah, I just wanted to say that in case anybody was like, why don't you just go ahead and do it now? You know, whatever. Okay. But yeah, in this episode, Miranda meets Steve after Carrie. Actually, I'm not, you know what? You know what? I'm not even going to go there. Because if Carrie had not been the Carrie that she is and doing the Carrie, then we would not have had the Miranda and Steve because you know like they would have been going out and stuff and whatever and you didn't need that explanation the next morning Steve is trying to make further plans with Miranda and let me just tell you the part where he comes back and he's like hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on tell me the real time tell me the real time you're gonna go meet your friends I love Miranda and Steve <laughs> can't stop saying it i just think there's so many layers to their relationship and it's just it's so much to talk about i'm not gonna get into it now but i just wanted to say that and i felt so bad for steve because i was like dang like she just like he actually was being genuine but then when she goes and she runs after him oh my god i love this couple so much it is the first time that we really see miranda try to form a real connection with a person despite maybe her initial reaction to them but earlier in the episode Miranda actually had a date to go see stand-up but the guy ended up being married and that's when she started questioning like you know are all men liars and that kind of thing the point is I'm so glad that Miranda was able to just give Steve a chance despite so recently being put in a position where you felt betrayed so I'm really really glad that we are finally able to talk about Steve and Miranda Steve is played by excuse me if I say his name wrong but David Eigenberg in this episode it was time for Charlotte not to have a storyline so she didn't really have anything going on but in this episode Samantha is dating an older man and stay tuned to the end of this video because I am going to be discussing all of my moments that I laughed at meanwhile in episode 9 Carrie catches Big looking at other women and she begins to see Big as a jerk Big won't give her a key and then she rolls off the bed because she he basically like pushes her out of bed and then she punches him in the face but on the plus side they actually have a real conversation for once i mean i'd say that's a plus it's not a very big plus it's it's kind of like when you overdraft your account by like however much money and like every time you get some new money like you'd be like oh yay new money but like you're still like a negative 500 yeah and i don't i don't do that but like yeah it's kind of that energy. And then Big finally sleeps at her place for once. Miranda is dating Steve. Charlotte dates a guy who's uncircumcised. He ends up getting a circumcision for her and then decides that he wants to spread his new gherkin with um <laughs> with other women samantha finds out that a guy that she once slept with is now dressing up as her this was another one of those moments where i was like okay are they not like are they confused on how to continue 
Samantha's storyline what was that even about and I'm not saying that it was weird that he was dressing up like her I mean that was a little because she's not like a celebrity or something but nonetheless why do we have to see that like and then she looked really uncomfortable and like, it just didn't make a lot of sense like as to why that we had to, it didn't push her story forward it didn't make her learn a lesson in the next episode that's when they start turning up that dial on you know what's gonna be coming after I'm done with all these episode reviews times where Carrie was shitty it made me want to turn off my tv soon my loves soon my loves from the why everybody hates Carrie Bradshaw video don't worry I got you back I have to tell y'all also that every single time that Miranda talks to Charlotte she's me it's me if you want to know exactly what my reaction is to a lot of stuff that Charlotte says or really a lot of stuff that goes on that's me right there in episode 10 Carrie finally tells Big that she loves him and big surprise he doesn't say it back she goes to this party and the hostess ends up trying to tell big that she's outside giving a gherkin massage oh my god i gotta come up with some better ones for these like this has got to get easier okay miranda goes over to steve's apartment for the first time charlotte is sleeping with a guy who keeps calling her charlene samantha is dating this guy and like i don't want to say his maid because i've heard i don't really remember what somebody said online was the proper term now for someone who is called that or if that that is just something that was made up or i don't know i'm not trying to be offensive i don't actually know the proper terminology so someone please just comment that below but yeah so you guys basically know what I'm talking about she is basically in love with him I don't care what you say because the way that she got Samantha up out of there but let's focus on more important matters that pizza that Steve and Miranda were sitting there eating why did they not save me a slice that pizza looks so good I could smell it through the screen I remember watching that part and literally I was so hungry I was like man if they don't pass me a slice today we gonna have some problems I might not be team Miranda no more. Because one thing I do love, I love the pizza in the North. I love it. I cherish it. I love the New York pizza. In episode 11, Miranda's gynecologist tells her that she has a lazy ovary and she begins to consider freezing her eggs. But then she has this dinner with this jerk of a guy. And oh my God, I literally wanted to like jump into her body and strangle him the character by the way guys the character because it's just like who are you these type of men the men that complain about all that women do is just use me i literally said this on a tiktok all that women want to do is just use me but then it's like you try to make it so clear that you have a role as a man to provide some kind of liquid component that is like supposed to be the key to my soul and existence and it should all rely on your opinion and what you think and everything like that like the entitlement is crazy how are you gonna not be with me because i'm freezing my eggs like if you don't get your whack ass out of here carrie tries to start leaving things at bigs and she does a number two okay now someone left a comment on one of my videos and i'm not gonna lie as time goes on, I'm starting to realize that I too have a love-hate relationship with Carrie. Like, I know I put so much emphasis on it before that I don't like her, but like, I'm starting to think like, there are some things about her that keep you watching, and there are some things about her that are actually relatable. Not like as much as I would like it to be, but still, there are some things that are relatable about her. Charlotte dates a man who she can't tell whether he's straight or gay, but I, I don't like this thing that they do where it's like, oh, well, what is he interested in? Oh, he likes shoes. Oh, he likes makeup oh he likes this he likes that like why is his sexuality based off of what he is interested in why are his interests tethered to him as a person like i don't get how that makes sense i have told this story before but like i'm sure if you're only knowing me from youtube you would not know about it but i'll never forget when i was like in middle school and there was this girl who walked up to me and she was like oh i thought you shaved your hair because you were going gay going going and i don't like hold anything against her for that because i feel like i myself said a lot of really stupid things in middle school and in high school but that was one of those moments that really just stuck out to me like oh so people think because of what you're into and what you look like it defines who you are internally also it's kind of like why do straight people feel so entitled to know about your sex life as a member of the lgbtqia community 
I have also made a TikTok about this before. I always just find it really funny how like straight people will sit around and say things like they're forcing the gay on us. Like, they're going to make everybody go gay up in here. Like, oh my God, like it's so terrible. All the gay people, blah, 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 blah. But then we'll sit up here and ask gay people about their sex lives and the intimate details of their sex lives, like how they do things and you know, all that nature. And it's like, no one is walking up to a hetero cis man or woman and saying like, prove to me that you're straight. Do it, do it, do something thing of the straight nature like that is such a weird thing to ask people to do why like you complain and complain and complain and complain and complain and talk about oh y'all are putting the gayness on the kids and y'all are doing this and y'all are doing that and blah, blah 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 but it's like literally coming out would not even be a big deal if it were not for straight people and that's the most ironic part of it all but yeah that's my personal take on that whole thing i don't like the storylines that are about like trying to put somebody in a category based off of their interests like i just don't understand that like in the harmful way that this is because it's just like let him define himself and like he was into her like at the end of the day i think that was the most important thing like how does he treat you as a person not what does he define himself as i was not expecting to go on a whole tangent like that my bad samantha is trying to get revenge on an ex who ends up doing the same thing that he does to her the first time which is leaving her for another woman and then in the next episode we see her in the beginning when she's doing that party and then again when she's at the table when Carrie has the meltdown. Carrie having that meltdown over Big and just feeling like she's right back in the same loop. I'm not gonna lie I feel for her because I think deep down I don't think she really wants to be hurt or put herself in positions where she is hurt it's like she's just a magnet to it she's truly just all over the place so apparently big has known for a while now that he was supposed to go on this business trip to paris and possibly stay there for a year he's known about it the whole time and he doesn't tell carrie about it so she feels like he doesn't care about her and they break up miranda is seeing a guy who only wants to do it in public or in places where he can get caught and this is where he got me because like i'm not gonna lie i was thinking the same thing as miranda i was like okay well he finally did it in a room so everything's good everything's cool no because then it was like why did he not stop why did he keep going like i was so uncomfortable also between the last episode and this episode i had two really like fun jamming sessions because of the song that they play when stanford is in the club in episode 12 also when they played the share song also back to big one more time big never said that it was going to be forever that he was going to be in paris he never said it was going to be forever the proper way for them to do that would have been to sit down and actually discuss it stanford is having an online relationship in this episode the timing of this episode is really weird though because like I said they did that whole debauchery with the guy that Charlotte thought was probably gay and then here they are like oh yeah we support Stanford like okay and I'm open to the possibility that, that may be me just overthinking it, but it just feels weird. In the midst of all this, Charlotte is getting a discount on shoes because the guy that is helping her out with the shoes has a foot fetish. In episode 13, Carrie literally sounds like Susan Sharon when she would not stop talking about her husband. Carrie will not stop talking about Big, so they refer her to a therapist. And then she ends up sleeping with the guy that she meets in therapy. Miranda thinks that one of her neighbors is staring at her through the window and the whole time he's not. Samantha is sleeping with a guy who will only sleep with her if his team wins. In this episode, Charlotte literally has nothing going on, once again. Between this episode and 214, they really just were so slow and they felt like filler episodes. But in 214, Miranda is dating a guy who's like unexplainably angry all the time. Why does he remind me of the brother in Wanderlust? Miranda admits that she's more attracted to him sexually than actually like his personality because he's a total jerkwad. Charlotte is trying out dating multiple men at once, but that totally backfires on her in the end because when she gets off a date with one the other one meets her at her house like trying to give her soup because she claims that she's sick but really it's just because she booked two dates in one day samantha fantasizes about having a threesome with her neighbors only to find out that they are much older than her carrie tries to turn her old tango partner into a relationship but why didn't 213 actually feel like the start of a new season because of the way it just kind of sweeps in in 214 we see skipper and then we literally never see him again i did some digging and basically just found out that they wanted to focus more on the core four main girls instead of all these different friends that Carrie has so Skipper just pretty much got cut. I will admit though what Miranda said to Carrie that one time where she says will you or will you just make the same mistake all over again? 
that was Loki like a little harsh Miranda like okay like like I get what she was trying to say and she was totally right but it was like oh okay like the breakup is still fresh but Miranda read Charlotte perfectly I mean she read her down to the T in episode 15 Miranda is seeing a guy with a kid Charlotte's brother's in town and he is getting divorced from his wife Samantha ends up sleeping with him and then Charlotte goes off and the slut shaming and the slut shaming because like I get it like she feels like okay you could have talked to me about you being interested but she secretly just feels like Samantha is not good enough for her brother. 215 is the episode that I discussed in my part one where Carrie is dating that guy who lacks stamina and his mom is like super obsessed with her and I was honestly like watching this I was wondering to myself is this what Samantha Loki would look like as a mom? Like with the being so open about the sex talk and things like that. In episode 16, Charlotte sleeps with a guy who ends up falling asleep on her. A gay couple tries to sleep with Samantha. Carrie dates a recovering alcoholic named Patrick. And I can't even lie, I really did love their chemistry. He's like constantly craving doing the devil's tango with Carrie. And when she asks to take a pause slash small break because he tells her that he loves her when they haven't even been dating for a month, then he relapses. Miranda was taking a hit in this episode because all she literally did was get new sheets. In episode 17, the girls go on a trip to the Hamptons where Charlotte gets crabs from dating a 20 something guy. Samantha's ex assistant throws a party. The girl who played Rogue. She plays one of Carrie's biggest fans. I actually like the guy in this episode. I, th I think that he's a pretty normal guy and he seems like he could have been really great with Carrie. All of a sudden, Big shows up to the party and who does he have? Natasha, his new girlfriend. She throws up and then starts crying and literally nothing of substance happens with Miranda in this episode. I mean, like we get a couple jokes here and there, I think, but overall nothing happens as far as plot for her. In the season finale, Carrie and Miranda run away from Steve when they see him in public. Charlotte is trying to overcome her fear of being back on a horse. Samantha dates a guy with a big gherkin and I just think that is so full circle because we started off this season with her dating James and we all know how that went. Samantha also admits that she misses James and finally after trying to convince herself that she can be friends with Big, Big ends up telling her that he's engaged. In the end, she tries to look at it with good faith and say that maybe things happen for a reason. If only y'all knew how long it took me to get all this recorded. This is literally the most in-depth I have been so far in these and I really hope that that shows and I hope that it makes a difference and I hope it makes the videos better. But now let's get into Steve and Miranda. It's the Steve and Miranda show. Am I going overboard? Let's find out. So glad I can finally get into this. Steve and Miranda have such a magnetic pull and I love their relationship so much. Also, for those of you who have been asking, I mentioned this in my comments. I pinned the comment on my part one video, but yes, I am going to be covering season one, season two, season three, season four, season five, season six, A, season 6b and the movies and and just like that please be patient with me on these videos because i'm running this whole thing by myself and i'm also only like two maybe three months into having a youtube channel so i'm going as fast as i can but this is so much to record like literally i want to say like all of this together is probably at least 40 minutes if not more of me having to break all this down in editing. So just be patient. I am trying to get these videos out as fast as I can. But also it's really important to me to have quality because I do know that authenticity and quality is what really works with people. So if I take a little bit longer on a video, just know that it's probably for a really good reason. But back to Steve and Miranda. They meet in episode eight of season two. Steve shows up later back at her apartment after they end up sleeping together that same night. And he's trying to make plans. And like I said earlier, like the fact that like he was like, nah, you gonna tell me what really the time is like that hmm okay and what I found the most funny about it is that the same way that she was reacting is exactly how I was gonna react to that if something like that happened to me in episode 9 they realize they are on two completely different schedules in episode 10 of season 2 it becomes very clear to Miranda that they have two completely different incomes Steve begins to feel threatened by this and he ends up breaking up with her then in episode 18, which is also the season finale, they reunite. I literally almost cry every single time that I see them reunite because it's just like, man. Plus, they are so 
funny. He showed up to her apartment trying to confront her about how she ran away with Carrie when she saw him. And the fact that like at first he's all like, yeah, you did this and you did that. And then at the end he's like, nah, I'm pretty crappy for coming up here like this anyway. By the end of the episode, they end up sleeping together. So I'm like, okay, like we're back in session. Now it's time for times that big made no sense. The first time was when he said, things like cake to carry in 207 when she's talking about how she feels like they don't want the same things and I really want to harp more on 212 because it really didn't make any sense like here he goes again excluding her talking about don't move for me like literally I agree with her what like why else would she move and then to hit her with the I guess old habits die hard line like talk about insult to injury like their relationship does kind of frustrate me a lot of the times but on the other hand like I do really kind of feel bad for Carrie like that must suck to be in love with somebody like that and then in 217 like the Paris deal fell through and you couldn't even contact Carrie you knew that like there was someone back at home missing you and wanting you to get your stuff together so that y'all can be together and you go try to get with another girl didn't even try to get back with her literally just moved on to Natasha like nothing ever happened and then in 218 like why is he engaged it's just like a bunch of crap like I just oh my god it just it's so frustrating now it's time for times where Carrie was shitty and made me want to turn off my tv I already talked about this but in episode 7 where she gets all in her feelings about Big and how he didn't stay for the poem but literally she didn't care about it at all. In episode 8 Carrie abandons Miranda for dinner and she goes to Big's and literally does not care at all. I'm talking about I have not seen nobody who does not care more than she did not in that moment. And Miranda was so right for what she said. And then in episode 10 it's like you're gonna break up with him because he's not gonna say I love you back right away. What a Dean moment. That Jeremiah guy sleeps over. She even makes out with him and it's like if Big would have done any of that we would have got about two episodes of her just talking about how messed up he is and everything else but she gets to make up the rule that she goes long in 212 the black scent is a brewing i mean it is a brewing the way she tells stanford oh no you didn't and then in 213 when miranda is literally trying to help her and tell her she needs to go seek therapy she comes from miranda talking about some yeah because you're always in your head like girl okay first of all you don't gotta take my help but don't be trying to come for me also when carrie meets that guy in 217 her voice does that really weird thing again carrie's smoking was on a different level this season i don't know what was going on also i can't show them because of youtube's guidelines but the sex scenes are so funny to me on so many levels because they're so okay i'm not even gonna get into it but you get what i'm talking about if you know you know i love charlotte's glasses so much and i honestly wish she would wear them more often in episode 13 the lady that plays dr g is also the same one that plays a lady at Lainey's baby shower in season one when Samantha said that she was the future she was totally right also are there any gossip girl fans here because she's dating Blair's dad in 211 now let's talk about all of the wonderful style moments by Carrie mostly just times where I loved her hair or her outfits in 207 where she's in bed with Big and then the pink dress that she wears in the very next scene in 28 I love her hair when she's walking with Samantha also I love her hair when Big tells her that he cannot make the dinner plans in 210 her outfit and her hair when she runs to the door I actually like her curly hair better in 212 I love her outfit and Charlotte's outfit when they're walking with Miranda I love her outfit when she's bringing Big McDonald's and her hair in 215 when she's talking to that guy's mom in 216 her hair at breakfast in 217 it's her outfit when she's on the computer her hair at the book party her bathing suit and her outfit later on at the party in 218 her hair when she calls big and her hair and her outfit when she has lunch with big in 218 I loved doing this video so much. I think that this has become so, so fun and I cannot wait to officially release the first Gilmore Girls one. I promise it is coming up. I have not forgot. I'm actively working on it, doing research and all that jazz. Just give me some time because I want to make sure that it is as good as it can be before I just put it out because I feel like people can really tell when you have to do something. I'd rather have the video come out late than it come out and it's terrible. Again, if you stay till the end, you can see all the moments that I laughed at. Let me know what you guys think below. Thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. But I know you're still here, because you want to see all the moments that I thought were funny. Let's take a look. Me, James, and his tiny penis were one big happy family. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> it's tragic. Oh, sorry, honey, but Carrie had this idea about returning. What? I hate it. He's sleep deprived, blah, blah, blah. I don't give a shit. Damn, you know what? On second thought, no, I don't think the Rogaine is working. So, God, 
Have you tried the baba ganoush? I can't believe what that woman can do with her belly button. Please, I think I'm... Not get a cab. So what did you do? Grab onto a bumper and let one drag you here? Oh, Liz was just looking over us, giving us her blessing. She was clearly sending a message. Yeah, don't fuck my husband, you hat-loving...